I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. I'm doing. I'm here to do a review on the Hawk VE, which stands for Vegas. It's a split harness system here, um, so you have cables running down either side, through there. So cables on both sides of the bow. This bow is 36 inches axle axle. It shoots 320 feet per second and a retail price of around the $1,200 Australian, um, somewhere around $1,000 American. Um, now I just want to talk about this cam system. When with archery, one of the big questions is about cam lean. So that's about the cam leaning over the side, and that's caused through many reasons, and different bow companies deal with it in different ways. So as you draw back on the bow, one side of the cam will get different amount of poundage to the other. So basically it causes the wheel to pull off to the side. Now as I said, bow, bow companies deal with that in different methods. Some have a yoke system here, which you then screw up the sides um, of the limbs. Now the other problem with that is, when you've got a cable guard on the side, it causes the bow to put more tension on the cables and it causes the wheel to twist over. So at some point, the wheel's probably going to be straight, but at another point, it's probably going to be angled. So depending on your poundage, and depending on where in the draw cycle it is, that wheel might be moving at an angle as you draw it back. So various companies try different ways to eliminate that. So PSE has the flexible cable, cable slide. G5 uses a twin track system on their Prime Series and their cable guard is flexible so it actually flexes in as you draw it to reduce the tension on the, on the, on the cans. This is Darton's um, method. So they use a different cam top and bottom. They use two cable guards and basically you shoot straight down the middle um, to reduce the cam lean. Now many years ago, a lot of people went for a split harness system, which is this harness system. And they took the standard cam system, which you see on most bows, and they split it. So you shot through the middle and they got rid of the cable guards. Now that still caused cam lean because the cams were not designed for it. The cam would have the string on one side, cable on the other side. So as you draw it back, you still got pressure on one side. So people used to tune it out with the yokes. With this yoke system here, you can see that the cables run on either side of the cam. So they're running either side of the cam. Now Martin, I, I believe Martin's got the patent on this and I've actually seen another bow with this system and it's called OK Archery and those bows are running American dollars, I think around 1400 Australian dollars, I think they're running around $1800. So with this system here on the Hawk and Martin also do this system on the Condor. Um, there's no cable guard and the cables run either side of the riser. So, the, so theoretically this cam system will be straight up and down the entire time which will aid in shooting and tuning the bow. So this is a module based system here. So you can see the modules, the numbers on the side and one allen key there to adjust it. No bow press is required. You have draw stops on the cams, just there, they're flat on both sides. So as you draw this bow back, it comes to a pretty good draw stop. Um, so this is the, this is Martin's solution to the cam lean problem. Now this bow also comes in a ghost cam, which is a standard hybrid cam setup, so a yoke cable up the top and a normal cam system down the bottom. Now the VE cam system, you're looking at about an extra $100 for, that, for this system. The VE cam is also 10 per second slower than the ghost cam, and I think it's a bit harder draw cycle than the ghost cam. But you are picking up this tunability, tunability of no, no cable guard and no cam lean. 
Now, when I saw this system, I saw it on OK, OK Archery, I thought this is a pretty good system. And I've seen reviews on the bows and everyone says what a great system this is. But when I see this bow, and I do like it, there are problems with this system. So one of the problems is, on a normal yoke system, there tends to be space here between the cables, like so. Um, on this system here, you'll see the cables actually touch on the, on the second here. On either side here, where they cross over, you can see the cables are actually touching. Now, with time, I assume that will cause some wear. So if I was to shoot this bow, I'd actually want to serve over the cables where they touch and rub to reduce wear. So to me, that's the downside of this. The other downside on this system here is to load your arrow up because you've got to load it up between the strings. So obviously you're not going to shoot this bow for broadheads because to thread a broadhead through the cables is obviously hard and you wouldn't want to nick your thing. But for target shooting, this is a system which you want to think about because it has eliminated the, the um, cam lead. It does have a yoke uh, modular system for adjustment, which OKC doesn't have. Um, the OK bows are more expensive and they are draw length specific, where this bow isn't, and this bow is significantly cheaper. Um, and it's got a bridge riser. This is finished in the white paint, um, which is a very nice paint system. The Here you can see the limb bolt. I'm hoping that will get in focus. So you can see how much more limb bolt you've got to unscrew before the bow basically pops open. The bow has um, riser dampeners, three riser dampeners, one there, one under the handle and one there. That reduces shock of this bow. Um, we're just going to have a quick shot with this bow um, and you can see what, it, what it's like to shoot. Thanks. Okay, we're here with the Hawk VE to have a shot. Now one of the things I've seen when people shoot this is about loading the bow and also this set of cables along the side here, how close it is to the arm of the bow. So when you're shooting, you can see here, do the cables actually touch? Now a lot of this is going to depend on your shooting technique and if you have the correct technique or a poor technique in your hand placement. So we're going to have a shot and see how it all goes. So bear that in mind because the reviews I've seen where people have shoot, shoot bows like this, they have mentioned about the cables touching the arm and I would say a lot of people I see, their technique is not good and the bowstring will hit their arm. Now if your bowstring is going to hit your arm then these cables are definitely going to hit your arm. But your bowstring shouldn't hit your arm and these cables should not hit your arm. So let's just have a shot. I found loading the arrow easy, so that's the first thing. In fact, I shoot a PC Dominator, and I would say this is no harder to load than the PC Dominator. It goes straight through the center, and it's pretty the same. So if you're shooting a Hoyt um, with a you know double riser or any of those bows with the double risers, so a riser either side, this to me is pretty much the same to load. So it's not an issue. I was wondering whether it would be when I first saw this bow. It's clearly not. Now, on the first shot, I'm not going to shoot. I'm just going to get a feel for what the draw cycle is like. So let's just... I'm going to check my hand grip position first. Now, in that first draw cycle, I actually felt the cables touching my arm. So we're going to try that again. Now, the draw cycle on this I find a lot harder than the ghost cam. The ghost cam I find really, really smooth and easy to draw. Um, doesn't have a big value. I think it's 65% load off, which is basically what a lot of target archers look for because it creates more back tension in the shot. So it creates a better release and some people say it makes you aim better. But more back tension and people, target archers, apparently want back tension. So let's just have a shot. So it's pretty solid. The cables are really close to my bow arm. And I'm in the valley now and it doesn't even feel like a valley. So 
We're going to take this shot. Now, in the shot, the cables actually touched my arm on the shot, but they didn't actually hit my arm, so there's no marks on my arm whatsoever, but they do brush up against it. And when I saw a guy reviewing an OK bow, OK archery bow, he goes, oh, it's got miles of room for your arm. Now, that's not, it's not correct. There's not inches of room. It's close. They run really close to your arm. And on the dart and bow with this split system like this, it's different, but like this, the cables run really close to your arm. In fact, even closer than this. So I'm going to have one more shot. I really like the shot. Um, I don't mind the draw cycle on this bow at all. It's just the ghost is easier and the ghost cam is faster. So just give that some consideration, but you are picking up this system here. Um, so I'm going to just grab the arrow and have another shot. Okay, so now when I look at new bows, I'm going, do I want to buy this bow? What's good, what's bad about this bow? The finish, I, the finish on this bow is great. I like it. I like the look of the white riser. I think it looks nice. I like the bridge riser. But one of the things I do like, I do like lower mounts down here. And even like the Matthews TRG, a lot of the bows now have lower stabilizer holes. Um, so here you'll see the stabilizer up the top. So if you want to fit a lower stabilizer rear, rear mount, there's actually no holes on the back here for it. So you're going to have to fit one on the front mount and then point it downwards. So for me, for a target bow, it's a bit of a minor um, negative. Um, the cable's touching, a bit of a minor negative. But the bow is nice to shoot. Um, the draw cycle's not as good as the Ghost cam. So this bow's a little bit more expensive, not as fast. But it does have this system. And this system, the advantage is no cam wing. So... Basically, the bow should tune pretty much spot on. Now, when I drew that back, you'll see me going like this. It's because I'm kind of waiting for the bow to hit the valley, and it doesn't feel like I'm getting in the valley, so I'm going, how do I hit the valley if I hit the wall? because it's kind of a solid draw cycle and that's just part of me getting used to this bow, so... The shot is nice. The bow to me is not as quiet as many of the other Martins. Um, I think probably you'd find the ghost, the, the normal hawk, will be quieter than this. I think you're probably picking up a bit of noise through the um, cables, um, touching each other. But this is a target bow. It's not a noisy bow, but it's not a hunting bow, so for a target bow, to me, it's actually not bad. And it is different. I like unique bows. And if you've seen any of my other YouTube videos, I do like the G5 because it's unique. I like things which are new. Um, this cam system I don't mind. And actually, I kind of like this bow. Um, when I'm looking at a bow for myself for 2015, and that's why I am right now, I'm looking at bows going, what am I going to buy for 2015? I do look at the Martin, and I do wonder about this cam system. I do wonder whether I'd buy the Hawk or the Condor. The Condor is 40 inches axle axle. This is 36. I do like the brace riser. It adds strength to the actual overall design of the bow. Um, I do like this bow. I'm not sure if it's going to be the bow I choose because uh, I haven't shot the Condor yet in either the Ghost Cam or the VE system, this cam system here. But it's a nice little bow. And if you are looking at a unique system with no cam lean, this is pretty good. And by the way, on the second shot, I didn't touch my arm. It does run close, but there's no marks. So it doesn't really worry me. Um, but I do like the bow. I 
it's unique and it's pretty cool. One of the things I saw in a video too about timing of these cams, the guy said that if you pull this cable in tight, then this cable here slackens off. Um, you can see it's kind of slack now. I can pull this in tighter so it comes off. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do it that way, but it's designed, you know, you can do it. with. You can tune this bow, you can twist up these yokes without the use of a bow press. Whether you do it or not, that's up to you. I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying I saw another YouTube video and it does work because I wanted to try it out. So you pull on the cable and the other side becomes slack. So you can actually give it, give the cables a, a twist. But the Martin Hawk VE, something different. There's only a couple of bows on the market like this with the split harness system. One's really expensive from OK. And Martin's got two of them, the Hawk and the Condor. So check them out if you're interested in the target bow. Um, I think it's quite nice. I like the balance, I like the grip. Um, really, I actually kind of like this bow. I'm not sure if it's the one I'm going to pick for 2015. And as the reviews progress, we'll see which one it is. Thank you. Bye.